Hello, and welcome to Cardinal Sports Live. I'm your host, Paige Washington. Joining me today are Preston Husband, Jack Kaiser, and Kyle Kendra. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Good. All right. Hello, and welcome to Cardinal Sports Live. I am your host, Paige Washington. Joining me on the show today are Preston Husband, Jack Kaiser, and Kyle Kendra. Jack. How are you guys? Kedra, Kedra, Jack got it. Kaiser, Preston. Okay, go ahead and talk. Well, I think Ball State really needs to pick up the offense a little bit. Keep going, keep going. Uh, they had a lot of turnovers in their first game, didn't really get much going on the offensive side of the ball. Riley Lee. Keep going. Keep going until they know you. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then I think they need to establish the rushing attack early in this game against Eastern Kentucky. Uh, they also need to shut down the Colonel's uh, rushing attack. Talk again. All right. <laughs> they need to shut down Eastern Kentucky's rush attack early. The Colonels have had 325 yards passing combined in their first two games, which is great. They generated 284 yards rushing in their previous game. Their quarterback situation is up in the air. They've played multiple guys. Shutting down the run will put pressure on the quarterbacks. After seeing the last two volleyball games, what can this team do to improve? You're good, you're good. Okay. My turn. All right, I'm Preston Husband from Huntington, Indiana. <laughs> I'm an IU fan, so it was kind of hard for me to uh, go to that game last Saturday and cheer for Ball State. Um, I'm glad IU came away with the victory, but I hope that's the only loss Ball State suffers this season. I uh, really enjoy going to Ball State. I'm enjoying it the uh, first few weeks. I'm a TCOM major. This is my uh, first show here. Okay, good. Oh, that's cold-blooded. I well, if you go to Ball State, I feel like you should support the school you go to first. Like, I'm a big Kansas basketball fan, but if Ball State was playing against Kansas, like, oh, that, that would be tough. Uh, in general, the Cardinals didn't play awful. They were simply plagued by a few factors. I'm a Notre Dame fan personally, so I know the Cardinals play Notre Dame in a couple years. Talk, talk louder. I know the Cardinals play Notre Dame in a couple years. That'll be really interesting. Like, you know, Ball State's going to get blown out. They are, because Notre Dame's just a superior program. But, you know, <laughs> if Ball State can hang in there for the first half, I'd be really proud of them. I'd be really, really proud of them. Yes, exactly. Yeah. always breaks my heart in the tournament. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. And okay. they were right. favored to win last year. Yeah. Project. Like, I had Project. all that pride. Like, 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 yes, yeah. I got a stuffy nose, in. so. And then they lose, and then I'm like, well, you guys oh, get to yeah. experience what I get to experience. Yeah. Talk. You My name's Paige Washington. 
Obviously, they need to fix the problems they had against IU, mainly the turnovers. They need to establish the running attack early. They only had 140 yards rushing compared to 325 against Georgia State. That opens up easier throws for Neal. He isn't Keith Wenning or Nate Davis. Sweet. Since it's all capitals, you have to yell it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and that's welcome. <laughs> that's how all teleprompters are. That'd be hilarious, though. I know. Pull some Anchorman Why tech stuff. Yeah, yeah, Anchorman, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Strip light. Anchorman. <laughs> that's so funny. Just sneeze. I, oh, my <laughs> gosh. Go screw yourself, ball skate. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I know. Literally. We're doing run through. Um, so if you act like a kid, he's going to count down. supposed to like look at her while she's introducing the show mm -hmm. yeah well, that's what it's kind of your feel like when they say usually you look at the camera right i don't know i i normally like i would start looking at the camera at and then when she's like starting at six yeah okay so you won't see us anyway yeah sweet so mm -hmm. i guess we could be like we'll make faces at you <laughs> So this is just a run through. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like treat it like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So. Okay, I didn't know if you were doing three, two, one, or if I was just gonna go. He's like cutting out. You're cutting out on him. I just say start talking. Okay, go ahead. See if they can keep up. Mm hmm. Okay. Did you do that during the show? Oh, no. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't do that. Okay. It's in my sleep. No, PD's not on. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's Sorry. when they... Yeah, now it's on. When it went live. <sighs> okay. Hello, and welcome to Cardinal Sports Live. I am your host, Paige Washington. Joining me today are Jack Kaiser, Preston Husband, and Kyle Ketter. How are you guys doing today? Doing great, doing Paige. Well. Doing good. Good, good, good. The football team made the short trip down to Bloomington, Indiana, where they faced the Indiana Hoosiers. The Cardinals have won the last three matchups against the Hoosiers, but struggled on Saturday, losing 30-20. to Ball State seemed to struggle throughout this in-state rivalry game, especially in the first half. So what do you guys think Ball State struggled with against the most? Uh, ooh, against Indiana. Well, I really think the Ball State Cardinals didn't play as awful as we thought they did. It was 30-0 to zero at one point, but, you know, there were just a few key factors that really plagued the Cardinals throughout the game. The first was turnovers. Obviously, the fumble uh, on the first drive of the game, and then the fumble down near the goal line of Indiana. It was 10-0 to zero at that point. If they score on that right, drive. We're, we're good. We're good. We're going to run. Yes. Really 
cat dry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 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 Hey. Hold on one sec. I gotta tell him something. All right, everyone. Uh, the lights up at the front. Just make sure you pay attention. I'm going to be pointing to which one they want to go to. So pay attention to which light's on. That's the camera you're going to want to look at, okay? Just make sure that you catch that. I know it'll be kind of difficult to be doing it, but just make sure to look at the light and then look at my hands. I'll go at staff for six. This is five, and that's the four, right? You really don't have to worry about the five and the four. All right, we're good. I'm colorblind to red. I'm kidding. I can see okay. it. <laughs> I really am, but I can see it. So are you red-green? Yeah. Red, green. <laughs> I'm good. You guys good to go live? Yes. They're good to go live. We're always good. We're about to go live, so. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> Hype. Hello, and welcome to Cardinal Sports Live. I am your host, Paige Washington. Joining me today are Jack Kaiser, Preston Husband, and Kyle Kedra. How are you guys doing today? Doing great, Paige. Doing well. Good, right. good, good. That's always nice to hear. Yep. The Ball State football team made a short road trip down to Bloomington, Indiana, where they faced the Indiana Hoosiers. The Cardinals have won their last three ma matchups against the Hoosiers, but struggled on Saturday, losing 30 to 20. Ball State seemed to struggle throughout this in-state rivalry game, especially in the first half. So what do you guys think Ball State struggled against with um, in Indiana's game? Well, the Ball State Cardinals really didn't play as awful as we thought they did. Uh, you know, they started off pretty rough, but there were just a few key factors that plagued the Cardinals throughout the game. The first was clearly turnovers. Mm. The first drive of the game, they fumbled on the second play. And then when they had a drive going down near the Indiana goal line, there was a fumble that resulted Right then, it's a 10-0 game. If they score on that play, it becomes 10-7. to Instead, Indiana goes back down and scores. It's 17-0. At that point, the game is really out of reach. And then the early second-half interception from Riley Neal. When he threw that, that took all the air out of the Ball State Cardinals if they had any coming out of the locker room. Uh, if they can correct those things going into their next game, that would be key. The other thing that I really noticed was they didn't find the big play on offense. It was very difficult for them to gain those big chunk yards. And that needs to come from the stars of the team, Kayvon Mabon, Kevon Mabon, excuse me, and James Gilbert. Um, and that all starts with the quarterback, as do most things. Uh, if he can make those big throws, that'll open up the rushing attack also, and that'll result in more offense for the Cardinals. Preston? Uh, first of all, I think the offense really struggled, as, uh, as you mentioned. But defensively, the ball state was just a wreck in the first half. There were too many open seam for the IU receivers who are very talented. You have Westbrook and uh, Simi Cobbs Jr. who was actually injured for IU in the first half. But if he would have stayed in the game, I know that would have opened it up even more for IU. The defense was all over the place. They could get no pressure on uh, the quarterback for IU whatsoever. And then, of course, that led to uh, just poor performance on the offensive side as well. It just seemed to... Uh, draw on over to the offense, and they couldn't get anything going. Uh, Gilbert just didn't have many touches, couldn't find any open holes. The offensive line struggled a little bit, and really just the whole team was a wreck in that first <laughs> half. Yeah. How about you, Kyle? I'm just going to combine kind of both what they uh, said. Uh, our defense overall, uh, they kind of held their own. They did give up a few big plays, but they were put in tough situations by our offense, especially – uh, IU, the very first possession of the game, they're starting at the 26-yard line. Um, then again, when we got momentum building, James Gilbert fumbles like at the five-yard line. Yeah. So that kind of crushed uh, James's confidence because mm -hmm. his uh, amount of touches he saw, and then we factored in various different running backs. Um, and then our defense, there were some injuries throughout as the game progressed, but overall, 
Uh, the slow start was hindered um, by our offense, I would say, at more over than our defense. Uh, because our defense ended up shutting them out the entire second half, and that's where we were able to uh, rattle off 20 points um, to gain that momentum for our offense. Defense did really help that game. Even though it was a tough loss for the Cardinals, they still have to come back refreshed as they play um, tomorrow in their home open opener. Well, they were where they will face Eastern Kentucky University. Like Ball State, the Colonials are one and one on the season. What does Ball State need to do next weekend to get this week um, win at home? Well, they obviously need to you know, fix the problems that they had against IU, first of all, mainly the turnovers. Uh, but they also need to establish their running attack early. They had 325 yards against Georgia State on the ground, only 140 against the IU Hoosiers. This opens up easier throws for Riley Neal, and at this stage in his career, he really needs easy targets and a clean pocket to make those throws. Uh, and they also need to shut down the Colonels' rushing attack. They've only had 325 yards passing in the last two games. That's not very impressive. But on the ground last game alone, they had 284 yards rushing. Uh, this And their quarterback situation is up in the air. So if they can really hone in on the Colonels' rushing attack and put the pressure uh, on the quarterback situation for those Colonels, then that'll open it up for Ball State. Preston? For sure. Eastern Kentucky coming in the game already using four quarterbacks this year. <laughs> They're not really sure where they want to go, but they have scored 79 points in two games, which is around 40 points per game. They did play Purdue. And they also played, I believe, a junior college in their last game. So they're coming off an easier win, but they will want to put the pressure on Ball State's defense, and they are looking to do that as Ball State did give up quite a, point, uh, quite a bit of points against IU in their last game out. Uh, as I mentioned, James Gilbert must get the ball more. He's very talented. Him and Kevon Mabon are the two playmakers on this team, and they need to get more touches. Neil's going to have to start making some passes as he only has 361 yards on the year. He's right over 50% on his completion rate. He's got to do a better job hitting uh, Maybon down the seam. So I'd say key to a victory, get Riley Neal some sh quick, short throws, um, get his confidence up, because uh, we are capable of big plays like Maybon, very uh, great aerial threat. Um, he's kind of a bigger guy, but especially – Shutting down their run, because that's the heart of Eastern Kentucky's offense. They're averaging about 4.5 yards a carry. Uh, but another factor that could come into play is Eastern Kentucky, they get a lot of penalties. They've already accounted from these past two games 85 yards in penalties. So we can use that momentum, um, them losing yards, us gaining yards, to kind of help speed up our offense, kind of get them in better field position. So it's easier for our defense if we do have to punt or uh, go three and out. All right, all right. Well, switching gears here to women's volleyball, they have had a rough start to the season with two in-state losses. Having such a dominant season last year, this young team seems to be struggling a lot with new coach Kelly Miller. After seeing these last two games, what can this team do to improve? Well, they lost their first nine games, but they actually have won their last two games. So that's somewhat of a, uh, an improvement. But Ball State's opponents have had 68 more kills than the Cardinals, and that's set up by sets. And mm -hmm. there's, six, there's 63 more set assists for the opponents of the Cardinals uh, than Ball State has. So they just simply aren't generating enough offense, I think, to be competitive. And uh, really it just comes uh, due to the immaturity of the Ball State Cardinals. They start a very young player in Kate Avila, who is the libero for the team. She's a freshman out of Yorktown, kind of a hometown, hometown hero, you could call <laughs> her. But she is one of the best players. She really just gives it her all every time she's on the court. And you can already see her growing as a leader. So as they continue to get older, they only have two seniors, one being Mackenzie uh, Kitchell. She's actually a grad senior. She's probably the most aggressive at the net. But Ball State needs to be much, much more aggressive at the net. They just seem to be lofting shots instead of hitting the ball hard. But with the new coach coming in, uh, Kelly Miller is doing a nice job connecting with the young players and getting them a lot of playing time for the future. Yeah, especially with all the young players. Uh, Ball State graduated seven from last, last season. A lot of them, like starters, they already had that chemistry. They already had that with uh, their former coach. So just a new system, a lot of young players. So they're still trying to find themselves, especially with their offense, their, their attack percentage is only about 
eighteen percent so that that's not very good where their opponents are about at uh, twenty one kind of percent uh, so overall we just got to pick up the offense and then kind of find the the team that plays best uh, together especially with such a young team yes well that does it for this week's episode of Cardinal Sports Live make sure to check out all the events happening this weekend within Cardinal Sports thanks to Jack Kaiser Preston Husband and Kyle Kedra see you next time on Cardinal Sports Live <laughs>